Have you ever lost anything that you really need and you just can't find it? Like the car keys. You've driven home from somewhere, you haven't been out again, they're in the house somewhere and you can't for the life of you find them. Or the family heirloom or that precious book. Or maybe there's someone in the family that's gone missing or your cat or dog has wandered off and gotten, gotten themselves lost. What do you do in those situations? Aside from open that cupboard door 17,000 times, you know, in the case of a missing person, of course the police are gonna be involved there and you wanna let the professionals do their job, but there are some things that you can do for all of these situations that may give peace of mind or it may give you the feeling that you are in control of something or that you just need to find those damn car keys because the spare set's lost too. I'm gonna to share some methods with you in this video that may help you get on track or at least find what you're looking for. Thanks for joining me everyone. Romy Bueller, Intuitive Investigator here. And I'm glad to see so many of you here because it means that I am not the only one that loses things very often. So there's a few things that you need. These are kind of the tools of the trade. You need a pen, you need a ruler or a straight edge. I don't like this, but I can't find my wooden ruler. Some people find that having numbers and writing on rulers too can switch you out of your intuitive space. So even if you just have a piece of timber that is a straight edge, uh, that is perfect. Sticky tape, only because you want to stick your mats down on your workspace. A pendulum. I have a video which I will put a link to that shows you how to make one of these if you don't have one already. A set of dowsing rods. I also have a video how to make these because these are literally wire coat hangers straight out of my wardrobe. You don't need to spend money on these things. So, and of course you need your maps or your diagram of your house if you're looking for your missing car keys and you know they are in the house. The other thing you'll need is a piece of paper with a vertical line on it. The other thing that you'll want to do, and you can Google this, I'm not gonna go through it in the video, is you need to have a way to get a yes, no answer. So if you have your pendulum attuned my yes is straight up and down and my no is across it's like i'm nodding yes or i'm shaking my head no that is the direction of my pendulum you can have your rods tuned in yes being open no they come back and cross over so you can use rods you can use your intuition if you're very strong on your yes and no a muscle testing technique i i work very much with muscle testing so yes and no with your muscle testing so make sure you have all of those things all ready to go. There is something else that you need to think about. If you're looking for a missing person or a missing animal, sometimes these animals and people leave of their own accord and they don't want to be found. So any work you do may get thrown, you'll get a false reading on that. Just be aware of that. We need to kind of set ourselves up. We don't just kind of barrel on in all stressed and upset and we sit down and there's noise going on everywhere and there's animals walking in and out and people yelling and do this work because that state of mind will also give you a false reading. You want to find a quiet space. You want to find a clear and quiet state of mind. So whether that's breathing or meditation or listening to some soft music, whatever it is that can just calm you down and clear all of that negative energy, activity, whatever's going on for you to clear that and just put it to the side for the moment. Once you've done that, you want to then decide what method you're going to try. Get all of your tools ready so you're not sort of in and out and trying to find all of your stuff. Get all your tools ready. And then you want to connect with the person or the object or the animal that you are trying to find. Now I'm not going to go into some of the details on this because that's a whole video in itself and there's a lot of information on Google that you can find on how to connect with a person, how to connect with an animal. Very briefly, you can just close your eyes, be quiet, 
bring them into your mind's eye and imagine that your energy is connecting with their energy. You know, some people connect a chord from their heart to their person or animal's heart. You may have your um, car keys, you bring them in your mind's eye and just imagine the energy of yourself and your car keys hooking up. Like you're trying to tune into a radio station, you know, have your antennas go out and connect into that 99.8 FM radio station where your car keys are. And then you're just going to do the process. Another, another hot tip here, well, I'm gonna have this map facing upwards, like north, south. Some people, just to help stay in that intuitive space, will turn their map upside down. Some people even turn it over altogether, so the map's not even showing. So you can try all of those ways. What you're going to need first up is a map to actually work with. How do you get that map? I'm assuming that you know the last location of the person or animal that's missing. And if the person is missing, the police will be onto that. So if they're flying interstate or overseas, the police will have a handle on all of those manifests. So, you know, let them do their job. Don't interfere with that. But if they're, if they're local, if nothing's happening, even if this is an old case, you know, if someone went missing 20 years ago and you want to do some work on this, the energy of that person is still available. And an animal, of course, you can connect in with them but you need a starting point. So you know their last known location. So bring up a map and broaden it out. And you might even want to do your entire country so you can then narrow it down. Now, what you wanna ask with your yes and no method, you want to ask firstly, if it's okay to actually do some map work on them or douse for them. So you ask your first question that you want your yes and no on is, after you've connected with Jane Doe, may I, can I, should I map dows on Jane Doe now? You might get a no and you really need to honour that because no might be just for five minutes, it might be for 10 hours, it might be forever. You can try again later and you might get a yes and then go for it. What you'll find is if you consistently get a no, the read that you get, the information you receive, will most likely be wrong. So that's the first thing. May I, can I, should I douse on Jane Doe now? So let's say you've got a yes. Okay, you know the last known location, but you're not sure. It's been three weeks, they could be interstate. So bring up the map of your country and you ask that map before you print it off. Let's save the trees, everybody. Before you print it off, you ask, is Jane Doe's current physical location on this map? and I'm pointing over here because that's where my computer is, where all my maps live. And if you get a no, then expand it out. If it's a yes, then you can print that map off and start really broad. Like, let's say it's Australia. You know, I, I start with Australia and I might end up in the Northern Territory. And then I will blow up the map of the Northern Territory and I'll go from there. But if you have some intel where, you know, your cat's been seen a few times around the area, you might just narrow it down a little bit closer to home. So you want to get to a point where you're now printing off the map. And that's where we're at now. I've printed off the map. I've stuck it down to the desk. I have my vertical line right next to me. And I firstly want to show you what I'm doing with that vertical line because it may be a little bit out of eyesight. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to, with my ruler, I'm going to um, slide across and down and get a cross point for Jane Doe. What I'm going to be looking at, and this, this is going to be over here, but what I'm going to be looking at is my eyes are going to be focused on the pendulum swinging straight up and down on my yes. If it's swinging a little to the left, I'm not quite there yet. Or if it's swinging to the right, I've gone too far. So. This is what's happening over here, even though you can't see it so well. This is my map of where Jane Doe is currently located and she's okay to be found. So I use my left hand, my non-dominant hand to work with. And I just start, my eyesight is over here, okay? So I'm not looking at this map at all. I'm looking over at my pendulum swinging and I'm waiting for it to go, yep, here we go. We're going straight up and down here. 
bearing in mind I'm actually making this up so don't take it too seriously there is no Jane Doe that I'm looking for so we just rule a line across there and then we go the other direction all right so the same thing I'm waiting and here we are here and here I have my location point. Now what I would do now is I would zoom in on this map and do that again and zoom in and do it again until I can get much closer to where I'm looking. I mentioned to you that you can also turn your map over and I'm going to do that here because I don't want to print off a whole lot of paper. This is very similar to what we've just done but we're actually triangulating an area coming we can just come across at any point I'm just coming left to right on an angle here and waiting for my pendulum to swing vertically that's our first and then I'm going to come straight down and there's our second line and then I'm going to come across you can turn your paper if you want to do it that way that's fine too so that's a triangulation. So in this area is where we're looking. And I would blow that up and look in there. My third method, all you need is your map and your ruler. The intention is to feel like your ruler is running over a little grain of sand or a little lump. I don't necessarily like this one, but it works for some people. So I'm just putting it here make sure your desk is really clean because if you do actually have a grain of sand on your desk and you're laying your map over the top that is going to give you false read so what you're doing in the same way that we've just been working the ruler is you're just going to lightly run it down and across the map now you want to tune into those feeling senses so you might even close your eyes and you're just lightly running your ruler down until you feel that grain of sand and then you come across oh and we've come up quick and there it is so the same way so you've got your cross point for your grain of sand along exactly the same lines as that you might find actually rather than running over a little lump that it's like your ruler has a braking system because it actually just gets really hard to move like it's locks onto the map and it just stops in which case you would rule your line and you'd come across the other way and it's starting to be hard to move here. So I would run my cross point line down there. The next method, I liked it a couple of times and then I just kind of got lost with it. It is the blink method and you're using a ruler and your eyes as your tool. So what you're trying to do is not blink intentionally not blink but when you do blink that is your target line sometimes for people that blink a lot like I blink a lot I know I blink a lot this can be quite a difficult thing because when you try and not blink your eyes sting and your eyes water and you're so much in your head and you're not really connected with what you're doing and the intuition kind of falls falls over a little bit so play around with it and see how you go so you slide your ruler down Ah, and there I blinked and then you rule your line and then you come across and you don't even have to look at the map you can just look out and there I've done I've gone again get your cross point zoom it in and keep going from there another method that you can use with the blinking is to have your map where you're just running your eyes back and forth across your map and when you blink you lock in on that area. So what you find is that you're not moving your head back and forth. You're literally just moving your eyes back and forth and they'll blink, but you'll consciously know what area you will see on your map, what area you blinked over the top of. Our next method, we need our pendulum. And this one has been a little hit and miss for me. I like it, but it hasn't been super accurate. 
I always start with anything I do here, I always start in the bottom center of my map. I don't know why. It doesn't mean you can't start at the top or to the sides. I just have a habit of starting here because it feels good. The intention here is for the pendulum to swing in the direction of Jane Doe or the target and to swing when it hits. So we start here and I might say in my mind or I might say out loud, where is Jane Doe? And then I'll follow the swing. Make sure your elbow's off the table. Relax your shoulders. What I always find is that my feet and legs are uncrossed. And then here, I'm now spinning in a circle. And so that would be my location. And then I would zoom it in and carry on. Another one that I really like is the pen tapping process. Again, I start down the bottom center of my map Elbow off the table, uncross your legs, and you're holding your pen really lightly. You can use a pencil here, you'll find the pen that you like. And if nothing's happening, you know, where is Jane Doe? Where is Jane Doe? Where is Jane Doe? You can just start the process, connecting in by tapping on your page until your pen actually just starts to tap and move itself. It might, if your pen stays on the page, it might actually draw you a scribbly line. For me, I like the tapping. Also know that this won't go in a straight line for the most part. Well, it doesn't for me anyway. So you're just tapping, 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 tapping. And what you'll find here is it will just stop tapping. It'll just tap in the same spot over and over again. So you can mark that spot, zoom it in. I like that one, it's been very effective actually for me. The last one we're going to have a look at, and I really like this one too, is with a dowsing rod. And it's just a single dowsing rod that you're using. So the corner will be on the desk and this end, the arm will be a little bit raised. So the dowsing rod can swing. What it, what it will do is it will swing and stop. So we're getting a cross point here. So we bring our rod down to the edge of the map and it's just going to swing until it hits a line of the target and that is there so then I use this as my ruler draw my line and then I will turn my map stick it back down and then bring the arm back down and we are looking for Jane Doe here and it stops and there you go with a cross point that is the last method that I'm sharing with you for the map dowsing today. The next one, and lastly, I want to help find something that's missing inside your house or in your office or in a building or in your car or something like that. So I have drawn a really bad diagram of a house. It's a single story house and my car keys are lost in here somewhere. The first thing, if you are across more than one story, then use your yes, no method to find out what floor are the car keys. And if it says it's on level one, then just go straight to level one. Okay, so I'm just going to use two of the methods that I've already shown you with the map for here. The first one will be with my pen, and the second one will be with my pen gem. Again, I'm starting bottom center here with my pen and I'm looking for the car keys and I just want to be shown where in the house are the car keys. And I just wait the same as I did before. It'll just tap across until it stops and it bounces in the one spot. Okay, the car keys are in the kitchen currently what I might do is I might make that whole paper, if I've got a really busy kitchen and I've got cupboards and drawers and pots and you know little boxes and things, I might make that whole piece of paper the kitchen and draw that out and try and find where in the kitchen it is. The other way that you can do it is with your pendulum and you can ask the pendulum to swing to the car keys in the house and here they are in the office I've gone straight in and the same thing with with the other method is that I might draw that whole piece of paper as the office 
especially uh, my office. There's a lot of stuff going on in here. Okay, well that is enough, I think, for today. Find one method and stick with it for a little while and see how it goes. And if it's just not working for you, scrap it and try another one. Practice makes perfect, of course. You can get someone to hide the house keys in your house and see if you can find them and play around that way and try and hone in on what the best way for you to work is. Hopefully you'll never have to use any of these methods to find your objects, your people or your animals. Thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget sign up to the YouTube channel so you can hear more hot tips and tricks from me. Keep practicing, have fun with it and good luck. Music